This is my face when Natasha sent out that hollandaise soup. And also anytime Gary talks down to my girl Daisy. Don't talk down to Daisy. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today we're talking Below Deck Sailing Yacht, Season 2, Episode 5, Hollandaise and Boussiers. You guys, I can't wait to get into this one because I have some controversial opinions and I'm going to need to know what your thoughts are because I have a lot of thoughts on this one. So let's get into the episode. Before we do, I do want to make sure I posted on my 90 Day Fiance video, but in case you don't watch that, I want to make sure I'm leaving it here. I also left a whole, uh, what is it, note in the community board, but in case you don't see any of that, um, nothing serious. I just have some medical stuff going on, so I'm going to be taking off the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'll come back better than new, I promise. So stick with me, stick with the channel. I, I'll i be trying to post here and there as I can. I just don't know how that'll go, honestly. Um, but uh, it's not COVID, it's just some other stuff going on. But I'm going to get all fixed up and I will be back soon. I'll be reading comments. You can find me there or you can find me on Twitter. And uh, I look forward to talking shit about everybody in just a couple of weeks. So again, check back. Notifications don't seem to be working for some people for some reason. Just check back on the channel. And thank you guys for everything. You guys have left so many nice messages. And I want you to know how much I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Also, if you're a Patreon member, thank you, thank you, thank you. Those episodes I already pre-recorded and got put up. So you won't even miss a beat on those. So thank you guys for everything. Let's get into the shit show. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this show and we're going to go into some of these scenes. But this is where I'm going to need your opinion because I have my opinions on this. First of all, my opinion is I love Daisy. Every time I try to think, hmm, am I just biased? No, I love Daisy. I think she's great. Her voice drives me absolutely crazy. But who am I to talk about anybody's voice, right? <laughs> but um, no, I just, Daisy, I really love her. She seems like a hard worker. I feel for her. Okay, let's get into the controversial of it all. Here's my thoughts. Um, I get that these ga guests sorry, are very high maintenance, right? I get that they're very demanding. There's, what, eight, nine of them? That's a lot. Oh, P.S., this was so shitty when he said to this kid, that he's gonna have to go to fat camp. I know he was kidding, but not cool, man, not cool. Okay, sorry. Um, I get that these guests are high maintenance, right? I think that they are pompous and arrogant and full of themselves and high maintenance and demanding and every other adjective you wanna throw at them. But, and I do say but, I, uh, I don't know how to say it. I just don't think they're that unreasonable. Sorry, don't hate me. No, I don't. I think when you really look at, okay, the, yes, they're unreasonable in some of their requests, but the way, or the food that was being brought out, and I am no chef, so you guys who have had food experience are going to know this way better than me. I'm specifically talking about like the hollandaise thing, right? I felt like she fucked it up, right? Am I the only one? I mean, it seemed wrong. It, it was drowning in holidays, and I'm sorry to jump ahead. It's just on my mind. Um... And a lot of the dishes, like the fries thing later, I get why she's frustrated. I'm saying she, Natasha's frustrated because they're not clear on when they want something and, and all that. But you don't you have to kind of anticipate their needs? This is a very expensive um, holiday. They expect a lot. And yeah, every chef we've ever seen has been temperamental. It just kind of comes with a job. But I'm thinking about Rachel. How would Rachel, and if you don't know who I'm talking about, Rachel is the last chef we had on Below Deck. She's like, hands down, the best chef I've ever seen on any of these shows. How would Rachel handle it? Rachel would make up new cuss words behind the scenes, but then she'd serve like a knockout dinner. I just haven't seen a knockout dinner. Even, you know, I was thinking about the sandwiches on the beach, right? They were asking for sandwiches. Um, and, you know, I'm not, it's not the crew's fault that they had, that the guests had to wait for whatever it was, 50 minutes. The tender broke down. We know this. I side with the guests because it was literally just, it looked like bread with a piece of ham in the middle. Now, while I would eat that and be very happy with it, I also get that if you're paying 
however many hundreds of thousands of dollars, whatever the number is, you probably want a little more than that. And I don't, don't hate me for this part either. I don't think it's unreasonable that they decide, hey, we just want a little snack. Let's push lunch back. Yes, it's annoying for the chef. And yes, with eight or nine people, I keep forgetting how many. That's rough. That's awful. I don't blame Natasha for being frustrated. I just, I just, the quality of the food doesn't seem to be there. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm open. I really am. I'm open on this one because I'm not sure that I'm right. I admit that these guests are very high maintenance, but I also think Natasha's messing it up. Um, I'm just, I'm curious to know, like, I can be easily swayed, so tell me if I'm wrong here, because this is how I'm seeing it. Uh, again, that primary is a nightmare, so I wouldn't want to serve him either, and he seems to, like, get off on changing things, so that's rough, but I'm just judging on food alone. Those sandwiches... The bath of hollandaise, and believe me, I could put a straw in hollandaise and drink it, but not with just poached eggs. Look at that. That's insane. Put some on some bread to let that soak up. I just can't imagine just eating the hollandaise sauce like that. Um, the She kept trying to say this is how it comes. Have you guys ever seen that? Poached eggs, not eggs benedict, but poached eggs in a bath of hollandaise like that. Because I haven't seen that. I promise I'm going to get off this hollandaise thing, so I just can't let this go. Um, but no, I really do want to know in the, th in the comments below. I'm sorry I'm focusing on this. I just keep thinking, am I crazy? But I actually think Natasha sucks. I mean, yeah, the primary sucks too, but Natasha sucks. No, am I wrong? I still love Daisy. I like John Luke too. He's, you know, I said it before, he's not the brightest, but he's cute. <laughs> and he's fun, and he seems sweet, and I kind of root for him and Danny because it doesn't make any sense at all, but sure. I also love Colin. He seems really sweet and I haven't changed my opinion on that. I'm sorry, I'm jumping all around here, but there's just so much going on and I feel like this is my last time <laughs> to record for a little bit, so I just have to put my thoughts out here. I didn't think what Daisy did was so bad. She went to talk to the captain and I'm trying to think, okay, I know I love Daisy. Let me take that part out of this. If this were Hannah, yeah, I'd probably be annoyed, but I feel like they've all done this, right? You kind of have to let the captain know if things aren't good. Like with the guests, in case they complain about it, he needs to be made aware. So I don't, I didn't, I hate when people rat people out. I think that sucks. But I didn't really see what Daisy is doing is that. Well, Natasha runs up there, and I understand why she's trying to defend herself, but I don't know. I'm just not a fan of Natasha right now. Um, how good did JL do now that he's getting sleep? How funny is that? Even Gary kind of remarked like, oh, wow, you're doing much better. Look what sleep can do. I'm jumping all around here. How weird is it that the guests were having conversations about, oh God, what's his name? The guy that primary is about to propose to the Saffron's ex-boyfriend. He makes a joke about him being Saffron's, I'm saying, I'm saying that all wrong, Saffron's um stepdad she's like ew no and i'm thinking ew no so if you don't know what i'm talking about and you missed last week you've been living under a rock saffron used to date the guy that the primary is about to get engaged to he, supposedly according to the articles that i read and you guys are amazing you sent me so much research on this uh this guy is the reason the primary and his ex-husband who's also on board with his boyfriend split up so that's interesting this guy here to the left is the guy the girl on the right that's saffron they used to date how weird is that i might need some ages on these people because saffron seriously looks like she's like 17 years old i have no idea how old the soon-to-be fiance is either i really need to know this information since this episode has already gone off the rails, let's just go a little further because I have every note written for every scene, but I'd rather just talk generally today. I just feel like that's how this one's going to go. So what the hell is up with Sydney? Why is she a stage five clinger? We know that Gary is disgusting, right? I mean, we know this. She doesn't seem to know this. Um, no, but Gary has told her, I'm not into you that way. This is not serious. You know, they boned, but he never, he never pretended like it was anything more, right? So I, 
I feel like she's in the wrong here, but how weird was that? When Gary was talking to Allie and Sydney just kind of like popped up and heard them talking and basically ran <laughs> into the galley to interrupt their conversation. The facial expressions between Gary and Allie were priceless. And it looks like things are going to get real weird next week when we saw like some butts and they talk about a weird thruple. We'll see what goes on there. Um, let's talk about John, Luke, and Danny. I, I kind of mentioned that before, but like, I'm for it. I didn't see it coming. I like Danny. She seems sweet. She's quiet. She's a hard worker. Um, I love that who was it? Allie was comparing a Great Dane and a Chihuahua. I thought that was fantastic. I'm going to tell you something else that bugged me about Natasha. And again, tell me if you think I'm wrong. I'm a big girl. I can handle it. Okay. Um... She complains when some of the guests order different things. Now, I get that would be effing annoying if nine people were ordering eggs nine different ways. That's not what happened at dinner. She made those lobsters, right? And two people requested chicken fingers instead. Um, and it was like the end of the world for her. She thought this was a huge deal. She was making fun of them talking about bibs and stuff. And one of them actually is a child. And I'm going to be honest with you, and I know I say some things. I was judging people for how they get their steaks done. So go ahead and judge me for this. But I'm probably picking chicken fingers over lobster. Sorry, sorry. Don't hate me. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, for real. So, again, if you're paying this much, like, eat the damn chicken fingers. Enjoy. Hell, get both. Order chicken fingers on the side of lobster. Isn't that kind of the point is just to indulge and have what you want. I just, again, I'm thinking about all the years with Ben where he'd make all these different meals to suit the vegetarians, the non-vegetarians, the pescatarians, you know, whatever food preference it is. You just kind of, as part of being a chef, you just kind of have to deal with it. So again, a little less than impressed with Natasha. I'm skipping all around. This Tinder thing breaks down. Again, I kind of love Colin. I say this every week. Um, I mentioned it in the other episodes. He has his own YouTube channel. It's amazing. Check it out. He's so cute. Uh, but he's trying to fix this Tinder, and he realizes it's more than just a little problem. It's a big problem involving hoses and leaking oil, and it's big. So Glenn has to get on the phone and charter, haha, another Tinder. So they'll have to pull two tenders behind the boat to make this work out because they need this tender, well, to take uh, the charter guests back and forth, to do things like bring food back and forth. We see Sydney here bringing a paddle board and paddling out some sandwiches to the guests and some drinks, at least to get them by. Now, again, I didn't think the guests were out of line here. They weren't. You know, I love Jean-Luc. He's just you know, he's a little slower. He's, you know, I just want to pat the top of his head. Not that I can reach it, but, um, you know, it's just him there. So they're probably wondering, okay, where are, is our sandwiches? It's been an hour. So he's trying to convey it to them, but you know, it's not their job to understand. I don't know. I just, I'm not sticking up for these guests. They're terrible people, but I just, I, again, I, it all falls back on Natasha. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. You guys, I laughed so hard, even though it's not funny, when <laughs> the boat got that white scuff mark on it. And we find out Glenn just got the boat painted and he's cussing. And I love Glenn so much. Okay, let's talk about Glenn for a minute. I love Glenn. I'm going to be honest with you. He's my favorite of the captains. Talking Captain Lee, Captain Sandy, and Glenn. Glenn's my favorite. Um, why is Glenn my favorite? Because he doesn't, and you guys don't hate me for this one. I have strong opinions here too. I liked Captain Lee previously. I did not care for him this last season. I have totally, totally like gone off the rails not liking Sandy. I'm so, I hope they, I hope they let her go and find somebody else. But Glenn, I really like, I don't know what it is. I think because he's not... He's not there for the theatrics. He's not, like, he doesn't seem hyper aware of the camera like the other two do. Uh, think about the annoying ways that Sandy hovers. He's not doing that. He does check in with the guests to make sure they're happy. But that's it. It's not over the top. I mean, he just genuinely seems like he's concerned with the guests. So, I love Glenn. I'm just leaving that there. 
We see weird flirting between Gary and Allie. Who cares? We'll see what happens there. I think it's just, I don't know. I think, honestly, he wants to flirt with Allie. He wants to bang her. And as soon as he bangs her, he'll move on to somebody else. And I can't fault him for that. I mean, it's not, it's whatever. They're on a boat. As long as they're consenting adults, who cares? But, um, but yeah, Sydney's going to be a real problem. Good luck with that. Okay. So, again, primary. I'm not trying to pile on Natasha. We've, we've said what we need to say about her. The primary is a pain in the ass. He's saying things like, I expect the chef to come out and tell me between each course what's going on. Well, we've seen it before. That's not really how that works, right? I mean, usually that's what the chief stew does. And maybe Daisy's doing that. I don't know. I think this, I think this is where the guests are just being high maintenance. So the primary asks his ex-husband and his ex-husband's new boyfriend that's a mouthful um if it'd be okay for him to propose tomorrow and the reason he's asking for permission is because it's on his ex-husband's birthday man this family likes to complicate things right that's a lot we see the guests or sorry we see that it's drag night so everybody's getting dressed up for the evening the guys are going to get dressed in drag let me just vent for a second about these guys and specifically i mean gary so when i say gary sucks i don't care who he puts his junk in that's between him and whoever that's not what bugs me it bugs me that he's such an ass and he's so cocky and full of himself and he's a terrible leader why do i say this because every time we see him like was it skating skirting his responsibilities it is very commonplace. We see it a lot of seasons where the interior gets bogged down and they do need the deck crew's help, like especially washing dishes, sometimes delivering plates. Well, good God, don't ask Gary because it's like World War III or it's like the end of the world. It's the biggest deal where it doesn't need to be. So Daisy is trying to please like the world's most unpleasable guests and still trying to she sees how gary is so she comes at him nicely about hey guys do you think you could dress and drag and he's like no mm -mm. um hey asshole you have to i mean it's just part of your tip right it's kind of whatever the guests want the guests get you don't say no to them okay thanks we see the i don't know there some stuff was going on here with the naughty boards the naughty boys i don't know what those floating dock things, there's some problems, but they didn't really explain what was going on there. We're going to move on past that. But no, back to Gary. Let's hate Gary for a minute. I just don't understand why he's so against... It's just like he doesn't want to work. He's just so against helping the interior. But the thing he doesn't seem to see is that he's helping the whole crew. It's part of the tip, right? So Daisy comes to find him again. This keeps happening. And says, hey, asshole, why don't you go ahead and put on your drag gear so that way you guys can come out, do the performance, and then somebody can change and help us do dishes. He's like, oh, 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 no, I've got to go do the dinghy or whatever the hell he said. Um, and Captain Glenn is right there. I love Captain Glenn. And Captain Glenn says, well, can't somebody else take care? I think it was a catamaran. Can't somebody else take care of the catamaran? And, uh, and kind of calls him out like, yeah, you should probably be helping interior so you know gary is going to use this against daisy it does come up in the preview we see for the next um episode so it's going to be world war three and it doesn't need to be and gary sucks and just make colin the bosun or whatever they call it on the sailboat get rid of gary i'm fine with that they have extra people anyway right they have four the interior has three what the hell i know colin's uh, chief engineer so he's a little different but still what the hell so the guys get changed, they get their makeup done, they finally come out. P.S. Again, I'm not trying to pile on Natasha, but did you hear the guests when they were talking about dinner? They were saying they were finding bits of shell in their food. Now, if you didn't pick up on it earlier with the tenders thing, I don't, I don't really eat seafood. I know, I'm a monster too. I judge everybody. Go ahead, judge me. It's fine. Um, and so that's not good, right? <laughs> I mean, even I know you're not supposed to eat the shell, so not looking good for Natasha. We'll see how this plays out. Okay, we see a preview to next time the primary is going to propose Daisy versus Natasha. So we'll see how that goes. It's over some sort of dessert that was 
Maybe a miscommunication. We'll see what happens. Daisy has to talk to the exterior about pitching in to help, which is ridiculous that she even has to say anything. I have faith in Glenn that he will stand up and do what's right and tell Gary he sucks. Um, it's going to be Allie, Sydney, and Gary joking about being in a very weird, weird thruple. Can't really show these photos because we see butts. And for whatever reason, YouTube doesn't like to see that. Did you guys see, if you didn't see, go back and watch the last second of footage when they're standing in their thongs about to jump in the water. Sydney shoves Allie into the water and inches, closes, inches closer to Gary. It was pretty funny to watch. And that made the whole preview for next week worth it to me. So a bit of a different episode this time, a recap I should say, I kind of jumped around, but I just wanted to put my thoughts out there because, again, I'm going to miss the hell out of you guys. I really am. I will be back though as soon as I'm able to, probably about three weeks or so, um, but I will be back and I can't wait to talk crap about all these people. I mentioned before, um, like on 90 Day Fiance with the tell all coming up, I'll try to get a video out at some point. I will still be watching Below Deck, so don't worry. I'll keep up with the storylines, and we'll jump back in. You know, we'll talk about all the crap that goes down while I'm away. But I will miss you all very much. I look forward to coming back, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And I'll talk to you soon. Again, thank you all so much for your kind words. I want you to know that I appreciate it so very much. Take care. Bye-bye.